Let's start the show with Chelsea, who could be one of the busiest clubs in the final few days of the transfer window. They could still sign as many as three players before the September the 1st deadline. The best place to start is Wesley Fofana. Mark, where are we with Wesley Fofana this Friday morning? It's become one of the... Saga summers, the summer, summer of saga, isn't it? It's been one of those situations where you just look at this situation and you can't help but feel frustrated for Brendan Rodgers and Leicester City. Um, this is a player that's been instrumental for them last season and potentially could be a huge player for this campaign, particularly off the back of the way it started. But it's been three bids from Chelsea for the defender, three bids rejected, uh, and that's the latest. The last bid was around £60 million, rising to about £70 million, but that was rejected immediately by Leicester City. They're not entertaining this bid at the moment. So this is going to be one that rumbles on probably until the, the very last knockings of the window. We know that Chelsea are in the market for a centre-half, having lost Andreas Christensen and Antonio Rudiger to Barcelona and Chelsea. They've got Kalidou Koulibaly, someone with huge experience in, but they're looking for another defender, someone that can step into that position. Thomas Tuchel wants to play a back three. Wesley Fofana can fill that role. He has Premier League experience. And the most important thing is his age. He's only 21. He's young. He's in his early 20s. So this would be a player that potentially if Chelsea got, they wouldn't have to rebuy for another 10 years because that's where he's at. Um, this is a, a deal that, that looks like it potentially could happen. The problem is that Brendan Rodgers and Leicester are getting frustrated at the moment. They don't have him currently training with the first team. He's with the under-23s. He missed the game last week. And Brendan Rodgers confirmed that he wouldn't be involved this weekend because his mindset just isn't right. So... As you can imagine, frustration on both sides. Chelsea trying their best to get a player they want. However, Leicester standing firm, which is something they've done so many times. You look at Harry Maguire, you look at Riyad Mahrez, you look at Ben Chilwell. They don't sell unless they're absolutely comfortable with the price that they're getting. Uh, and you get the feeling this will be a very similar situation in some respects. Well, let's pick up on what you were talking about there because uh, Brennan Rodgers did speak to the media yesterday. He was comparing the situation between Fofana and that of Harry Maguire as well. Let's hear from him. No, no, it was totally different. Um, I think there was... I was aware over the course of the, the summer that uh, there was a possibility that could happen. And I think, uh, in fairness to Harry, I've always said this before, and I'll repeat, Harry was... In terms of his behaviour and his uh, his focus for the club was, was fantastic. And uh, right until the last minute, he was with the team and with the squad. And then he, uh, then he moved on. So, um, so no, the uh, it it is different. Obviously, in in a few of my seasons here, we've lost obviously Ben Chilwell as well. Um, but this, unfortunately, is just a little bit different. But uh, but our focus is with the team and uh, the players that are available. So that's what uh, Brendan Rodgers said yesterday. Um, how do we think the manager has handled this situation? I think he's dealt with a really, really difficult set, set, um, decision actually quite well. It's a really difficult situation for him as a Leicester manager to know that one of your players is agitating for a move, know that he is, isn't giving his all in training. As Mark already mentioned, he's training with the under-23s now. He said that his mindset is just simply not in the right place. So what is, are you as a manager meant to do? I'm interested to hear from Leicester fans on this one. Do tweet us in and let you know how you think he's handled it. But for me, he, he couldn't have done much more. He said, I can't lose energy thinking about it. That speaks to me that he is a little bit frustrated with the situation. But if you are a club like Leicester and you're in the situation where you need to sell players, you need to have this business model where you need to sell players to bring new players in, and you're at the stage where the Premier League has already started, you're playing games and you've got players who are distracted, you're bound to be a little bit frustrated. So under the circumstances, he's dealt with it well. Some of the things he said have been really interesting, in particular the comparisons to Harry Maguire because he sort of suggested there that Harry Maguire was a consummate pr professional until he left, whereas this situation might be a little bit different. He's not giving his all. His mind is not in the right place. So, difficult situation. It's, it's only got a week now, as you mentioned, for it to be resolved less than a week. So what will happen? I'll tell you why I think Leicester and Brendan Rodgers will be really frustrated with this situation. Two reasons. First of all, Wesley Fofana had a really bad injury and the club stood by him and they supported him and got him through that. And then off the back of that injury and his performances, they offered him a new contract to show their loyalty and respect to him. He signed that contract, which in theory would keep him at the King Power to 2027. 
it really frustrates me when players sign new contracts still with the intention of leaving. But the power you, is in Leicester's hands then, isn't it? Of course, of course, and that hence why they've rejected the third bid. They're standing firm with their valuation on the player and saying you're not leaving. Players need to also respect their contracts and respect the club and the manager and their teammates. And by getting frustrated off the back of signing a contract less than six months ago, it shows a little bit of lack of respect, in my opinion. A class player, he'll get his move to a big, big six club or a big club in European football, no question about it. Maybe the right thing for him right now is to show a little bit of loyalty to Leicester in their hour of need, play well and then go next summer. He might need to as well, though. He might need to buckle down because if he's still a Leicester player at the end of the window, the player's left in a situation where if he wants to move in January or next summer, he's going to have to prove himself and get game time again. So if that, if that ends up, he's going to have to prove that he's committed to the club, committed to, to Leicester, and he's committed to working with Brendan Rodgers. And that might be the situation he finds himself in if Chelsea don't come in with another bid or, or are willing to pay a record-breaking fee for a defender because that's what Leicester are expecting. I wanted to play devil's advocate there and, and look at the player side of things. Absolutely agree with what Mark just said there and what you're saying there and how Brendan Rodgers is comparing Harry Maguire's situation to Wesley Fofana's situation and saying that they're different. We're seeing it a little bit with Anthony Gordon, which we'll talk a little bit later on in the show in terms of when you are a young player, you know, football is a, is a short career. Yes, they're young, but sometimes when the big clubs come knocking, you're thinking, I don't know when I'm going to get this opportunity again. Yes, he's got a long career ahead of him, but if you, if you flip it, he's just had a big injury. That could have, that could have taught him a, an awful lot about football in terms of, wow, what, what if I get another one of these and, and I'm not the same player? Maybe this might be my best chance to, to get that security, to get that next step in my career. I feel like I've achieved the next steps in my, in my career whilst at Leicester, who've done fantastic. It's a World Cup year. I want to break into the French team. I've got the chance to learn off, learn off Thiago Silva, Koulibaly. I've got a chance to be at Chelsea and play in the Champions League and compete for the highest honours. Um, in a transitional period at Chelsea. Um, so I, if I was a fan of Leicester, 100% see where Mark's coming from in terms of how difficult that is. You want that, that you know, to repay that faith. And, and absolutely. But sometimes from a player point of view, they can look at it the other way and say, you know what, I've got a fantastic opportunity here. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I've just come back off a long injury. What, what if I come back and have another long injury, then Chelsea never come back for me again? And that's no disrespect to Leicester, but that's just from the player side that's something Wesley Fofana could be thinking. You make a great point that the opportunity to go to another club like Chelsea might not ever present itself again. I can think of two or three examples where players have had the opportunity to join big clubs. Joshua King at Bournemouth, for example, had the opportunity to go to Manchester United one January window, never materialised. Bournemouth rejected the bid because they wanted to keep him because he was key to what they were doing. That opportunity never came again and his career didn't go in the same direction it potentially could have gone if he'd gone to Manchester United. The one thing I disagree with, he has got security. He has got security at Leicester City because he signed that long-term deal. But that opportunity may not come again and that's the, the balance between being a player and being a football club and being a fan. And it, it, that's why transfers is so fascinating. That's why we're sat here now. Himself in the meantime, that's what's frustrating as a Leicester fan. He's not committing himself in the meantime and he's not playing for Leicester when he's still a player on their book. I do agree with that. I mean, if, I don't know whether that's a decision that Brendan Rodgers took because Wesley Vifana is has put himself to say, I can't train. While this is happening, I'm not training, almost like a, you know, trying to push through the move, or whether Brendan Rodgers thought, there's a lot going on here, I just don't think it's very settling for the group. So actually, mm -hmm. until it's sorted, you, you're gonna stay in the under 23s, because I guarantee you, yeah. if he stays at the football club, because they've got a lot to, to sort out at Leicester City, he'll need reintegrating. So the, the, the closer it gets to deadline day, then, is this, is this move more or less likely to happen? Yeah, that's such a difficult question because, like you said, Harry Maguire had his price. Players like Mares have had their price. Kante have had their price. Leicester are in a are in a bit of a sticky situation in terms of they're not managing to kick on. They're, there's question marks over the spine of that team. You look at Yuri Tillemans. There's question marks there. Okay, James Madison, maybe he may sign a new deal. Um, you look at Kasper Schmeichel, he's gone. So there is a little bit of uncertainty around their top players. Um, I just feel that the, because he's already training with the under-23s, I just think it's Leicester saying, well, if it is going to happen, we need to line up a replacement and also we are not letting you go until we get the money that we, we think you're worth or it won't happen. So I think Chelsea will continue to push. I think it will happen, that's personally. The that's the problem as well, finally, with regards to this Fafana situation. If the Leicester City get the £80 million pounds or £85 million pounds that we believe they're looking for for Fafana, they then have to go and replace him with six days left in the window. They go to the club and say, we would like to buy your defender, and they say, OK, fine, it's 
it's an extra 25% more than what we would have said this time last week because we know you've got £80 million to spend and you're desperate because the time's running out. And that's the problem Leicester City have got at the moment. So as every day passes, they'll be even more desperate to keep him in the building. Mm. Well, from what Brendan Rodgers has said, he, he thinks is that he's happy to work with the, uh, the players that they have at, at Leicester City at the moment, should things stay as they are there. Just to flip this back towards Chelsea, um, they are looking at alternatives to Wesley Fofana. Sky Germany reporting that the Bayer Leverkusen defender Edmund Tapsoba is top of Chelsea's alternative targets to Wesley Fofana. Initial inquiries, no concrete negotiations yet over a deal for the 23-year-old. Let's continue along that Chelsea theme then. What about other incomings at Chelsea? Anthony Gordon, we know, Flex, is a, a top priority for Chelsea. I've got to be honest, it quite surprised me that they're, they're trying to go after Anthony Gordon at, at this price as well that's been reported um, of the best part of, of, of £60 million. Um, look, Anthony Gordon is an exciting prospect. I think he had a, a, a positive breakthrough season in a difficult season for Everton Football Club last year, battling relegation. Um, you know, last year, 35 appearances in the league, four goals, two assists. Now, that may seem underwhelming, but I think the impact that he had and, and how he kind of helped Everton in a really dark situation um, doesn't reflect the stats that, we've see, that we're seeing there in a, in, a, in a more able squad, in a more ambitious squad. Um, you know, you may see him perform differently. But for me, it's, it's similar to the Fofana situation. You've, you've just come through at Everton. They've managed to stay in the league last year. They're looking to build again this year. Again, it's the player situation versus, you know, he's, an Ever he's come through the academy. Does he stay there and home his craft and, and develop a little bit more on the term, on the like how what you're saying in terms of bigger moves will come, moves will come, or does he say I've got the chance to go to Chelsea? You know, I've I've had a good breakthrough season. Maybe they'll move on from me and I might not get that that move. Maybe it might be even more difficult this season um, at Everton. Can I get that move now? Can I test myself? Can I put myself against the best? I would argue that you know that was his first breakthrough season. Stay at Everton maybe kick on a little bit, show a little bit more. You know, the Everton fans absolutely love you. You're one of them. Um, but again, players have different different opinions. You might not get that opportunity again. He might not. <laughs> literally the opposite to what I just said. Yeah, well, lots of you getting involved in the Fafana uh, debate there. Terence says uh, he signed a five-year deal. Now he decides he wants to go. He's made his bed. Now make him lie in it. Richard says, I disagree with Mark. Uh, when he signed the new contract, was he aware of Chelsea's interest? If he was, then I agree, but I doubt he was. So in his mind, he was committed to them when he signed the contract. Keith says, spot on, Mark. Fafana and players need more respect for their club when the club has stood by him and recently signed a new contract. Fafana, he says, Ups and downs. is an embarrassment. There you go. Can Lots just, of debate. Just one thing as well. There's a lot of clubs that don't respect players when it yeah. comes to the end of their contracts and when they want to shuffle them out the door or get rid of them, they don't. So it is a two-way street. Absolutely, absolutely. Keep your thoughts coming into us. Hashtag Transfer Talk. Don't forget, if you're out and about, you can keep across the latest deals as well via the Transfer Centre blog. Do head over to skysports.com or the app as well.